What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekoWatt video. In this one, I'm going to be attempting to build the best $1,000 gaming PC build you can put together right now. But I'm going to do things a little bit differently, starting off by picking all of the parts based on pricing and availability right now, ordering the components and in a couple of days, getting them all assembled to see if this build looks the part, performs well and stacks up to the expectations that my part selections will provide. Let's Let's do this. There are a number of different tools that you can use to pick PC parts. PC Part Picker is the most famous. It lets you compare pricing and compatibility. But I'm going to use Newegg to keep everything centralized and simple in one place. And it means those of you willing to shop around can save probably a little bit more money from the budget as well. Looking at CPU options, you've got a couple of different choices. The i5-13400F probably strikes out to me as one of the most obvious. $207 with a free Intel screwdriver. But I'm kind of gravitating, especially against the backdrop of 14th gen, to some like the Ryzen 5 7600. Now you can find this for $224. The extra $20 is definitely worth it. Looking online as well, the 7600X comes in about $250. So that's a good potential thing to consider. Various offers might bring this down. So if there's not much of a disparity between the 7600 and the 7600X, it's certainly not a bad choice. Once we've got that in, that then determines the kind of motherboard available to us. I want to search for a B650 motherboard and see what is potentially doable within the budget. As rock I've got one here for a $125. That is mega, mega cheap. On par probably with the cheap A620 designs. The Gigabyte one strikes out to me though. Any board with AX or Wi-Fi on the end has Wi-Fi as standard, which is really important for those of you without a wired connection. Other boards are particularly more expensive. The MSI Pro B650 looks quite basic. I quite like the look of this Gigabyte B650 Gaming X AX. So I'm going to add that to the cart. And at $159 right now, you can't go too far wrong. As far as memory goes, I next up want to pick 30 32 gigs of DDR5. I'll keep this nice and simple. If you're building a system for $1,000 or less, 16 gigs is fine. 1,000 to 2,000, you want 32 gigs. Beyond that, you may want to consider 64. Now, taking a look, 100 or so dollars seems to be the going price for memory. I'd like to maybe look at doing like some white accents in this build. So there's a Corsair kit here for 120 that's white. But I recently had the chance to look at some of the new A data kits from XPG, and I want to see how they stack up pricing wise as well. XPG Lancer, here we go. This is more like it. $99, $94. This one here is 6,000 megahertz without the RGB. Or if we keep scrolling down, there are options with RGB as well. This white Lancer kit looks pretty good. $99. It has a cast latency of 30. That's pretty good. DDR5, 6,000 megahertz, under $100. Definitely the one to go for. Sticking with the white theme, I think now is also a good time to put the case in. I've really been a fan recently of the Montec lineup. They've got some really great chassis. The Montec Air is obviously a famous cheap budget case, but they've now got a new version called the Air 903, and it's available in white for $74 with RGB fans, or the base model without the RGB fans is $69. I think that's very reasonable, and I'll let you guys decide which you prefer. I'm going to go RGB as for $6, $7 more. You're never going to be able to pick up three RGB fans. It supports EATX motherboards. It's got 140 mil PWM fans. Even supports, apparently, RTX 4090 GPUs. That's definitely going to be fine for the kind of build we're looking to assemble here. As far as other components go, we've got the CPU, we've got the motherboard, the RAM, the case. We need a cooler for that processor. Now, take a look at some of the options. Deepcool's AK400 is always a sensational shout. This black one is $34, but you get an extra $7 off with the promo code. I mentioned white accents, though. It's something I want to go for. Same price in white, $6 off this time. I think we'll spend the extra dollar to get the nice white aesthetic. Put that straight in the cart. Now, you can see here we're up to around about $597 so far with the discounts and the combos were down to 556 US dollars and we've got pretty much half of the components. Looking at other bits, I'm missing a power supply at the moment. So that's another area I think I need to revisit and find something suitable. I'm going to hedge my bets and reckon that something about 750 watts is going to make the most sense. Of course, I've got that RM750 for 120, but with the promo code 105, a little bit more expensive than what I probably wanted to spend. RM750E for 100, 89 for the CX750M, that's going to work fine. 
We may revisit this afterwards, depending on, of course, whether or not it's enough wattage, but I imagine for a build like this, it definitely should be. Up to 687 so far, and just one more component to go. We want to go for a Gen 4 PCIe NVMe drive next up. Storage nowadays is actually kind of easy to pick. Spending $1,000 or less, you want a one terabyte middle of the road Gen 4 NVMe. Spending more than $1,000, go for a two terabyte drive. Spending loads of money, consider the new PCI Gen 5 options. Thinking about it, actually, we've gone for the XPG memory. I want to see what options that XPG or ADATA have got available here as well. This is interesting. The S70 blade. This ships direct from XPG. S70 blade, $54.99. A terabyte. It's got really good read and write speeds. It's not the highest end Gen 4, but it's so much quicker than the Gen 3 options that for me, it works perfectly. That leaves us at $701. So we've got $300 or $298.11 left to spend on the graphics card. So let's see where we're at. In order to pick a good GPU, we need to sort of understand the state of the GPU market. So here's the quickest outline I'll ever give. For the sub $400 price point, you are really struggling when it comes to next gen cards. RX 7600 and RTX 4060 are the two options. 4060, rubbish. Don't buy it. No one should buy that card. Nvidia shouldn't have even made it. Don't even consider it. AMD RX 7600 is better, but it's still not fantastic. And that leads me to consider last gen options. Something like a 3060 12 gig. Or better, something like an RX 6700, if it will fit within the budget. Now you can get this XFX card for mega cheap. $279 is like incredibly cheap, but I've had good experiences with some of the cards from Sapphire. And at 309, it's not the cheapest RX 6700, but it's one of the cheapest. In our testing, the 6700 XT consistently holds up really well. Take a game like Starfield, for example, 1440p high, and we managed to get 73 FPS out of the 6700 XT. Here, the extra 12 gigabytes of VRAM over the 8 gigs on something like a 7600 makes a huge difference, especially at 1440p. Same with Hogwarts Legacy, we got 78 FPS on average at 1440p high, and as you can see from some of our other testing, this holds up really well against the competition. Games like Warzone 2 also perform really nicely, 120 FPS on average, with solid 90 and 99th percentiles for good measure. And even of course games like Fortnite at that lower 1080p resolution, competitive settings in this instance, also look really great with 280 FPS on the 6700 XT in our testing for this build. Whether you're looking to play AAA titles or easier to run FPS games like Apex Legends, another game we've tested rigorously with the 6700 XT, you're going to see some great mileage. And this is a card that despite being released in the last generation is genuinely good for now and into the future. You can never truly future proof, but you can definitely make an effort to try. So let's see where we land. We've got all the parts in the basket. I have a feeling we're going to have gone a bit over. 11 dollars over. Please forgive me. We have got $11 over budget, but I think it's going to be worth it when it comes to the performance that is achievable from this system. So let me order all of these parts, head to checkout, and I'll rejoin you in a couple of days once it's all arrived. A couple of days have passed and all of the parts that I didn't already have are now here, meaning I can finally get this build assembled. With all the parts on the table, it can be kind of confusing to know where to start, but we're going to keep things simple. We're going to get the motherboard involved, first of all, and install into the board the processor, the NVMe SSD, and then also the memory. This is what's going to form what we call the motherboard assembly, and doing this outside of the case choice, which is of course the Montex chassis we picked earlier, makes things a lot easier later. Gigabyte's B6 650 AX is just a really nice board. I'm a massive fan personally. It's going to fit the build really, really nicely for what we need in today's build and doesn't cost the earth, which is perhaps the most important part when it comes to a build that's arguably much more price conscious. CPU installation is pretty easy. Push the arm down, lift the socket cover up and drop the chip into place. Nice and simple. Cover back down, arm in and we're good to go. RAM is next on the agenda. 32 gigabytes of this XPG Lancer is going to do the job nicely. I don't think I fully realized just how good this RAM would look until it arrived, but I am a massive fan. In this build, I'll be using slots one and three, which is rather confusingly the second and fourth slots for dual channel memory performance. Slide in the RAM into place. Nice. Bit of pressure on both sides and the RAM will click in with basically no trouble or bother whatsoever. While I'm here, I'm also going to go ahead and remove the M.2 heatsink to install the NVMe drive. You want to use a teeny tiny screwdriver for this stage. Your large Phillips head is simply going to be too large. Take that out. That will reveal the M.2 slot. We can pop the Gamex S70 in and secure the heat spreader down for good measure. This not only hides the drive and looks nicer, but it keeps it cool, which is important for hot 
HTM4 and the MEs. Once that's done, the motherboard assembly is basically there, but I'm also going to pop the cooler on now while I have time. And I appear to have messed up a little bit. And when I say a little bit, I mean quite a lot. I've bought the wrong cooler. It's supposed to be white with one fan. This is black with two, which would be good if I was building a black system, which I'm not. So I'm going to install this for now as the installation process is the same as the white version, but hopefully there'll be some nice snazzy shots on your screen by the end of the video with the white version, which is obviously the right cooler for the build. So apologies, I'll link the correct one down at the affiliate links in the description below. In terms of cooler installation though, the Deepcool AK400 lineup, see how I save that, is actually pretty easy and probably one of my favorite CPU air coolers to actually install. That's because you get this. Now this here is like a universal bracket basically that supports all different socket types and the AK400. This particular board as well, with it being AM5, has all the holes sort of pre-threaded and ready to go for CPU coolers to be installed. In the box, you get these little orange sort of stoppers or spaces, I suppose, which are going to go onto each of the holes around the CPU socket. Then the metal black sort of install plate on the white one, I think this is either white or silver, goes onto the top of there. And then the included screws that you get with the motherboard are going to then pop through the bracket, helping you to fasten down the bracket without too many problems. So four screws, that's going to then get the installation plate exactly as we want it. That then paves the way to install the actual CPU heatsink, which yes, is the wrong color. We're going to sort that out later. To do this, take both of the fans off and then grab the heatsink and just check that all lines up with the bracket. If it does, a dab of thermal paste before tightening those two screws up will do the business. We can add the fans back on at a later date. And by a later date, I mean later on once this is all in the case and then eventually, of course, when we get the right color tower to swap out to match the whole build. There we are. That is exactly what I was after. Now, what this is going to do is install into the case. And this is the stunning Montec Air 903. Now, I'm so glad this thing is competitively priced. We have a peel. Because when I first saw this back at Computex, I was very impressed by it. And let me explain to you why. For $72, I challenge you to find me another case with three ARGB fans included at the front, all of 140 mil size, 140 mil fan at the rear, so we've got loads of airflow, a front panel design that not only looks sleek, is great for airflow and temperatures, but also just pops off with a single toolless magnetic mechanism. He says as he can't get it back in. E80X motherboard support and captive rear thumb screws on the back IO. Oh, and a USB-C port on the front panel with an integrated RGB controller, great pre-managed cables, easy to build in, high quality materials. Need I go on? Montec have done a really good job and I am going to order the black version for a black version of this build maybe later on down the line. It's just really, really great and I can't recommend for the money this case enough. It's a massive step above the famous Montec Air, which is of course cheaper. This is way higher quality and far better value for money, in my opinion. What do you guys think of this case though? Let me know. There's a comment section on our dedicated review of the Montec Air on our website, which I'll link down in the description below. Now, when it comes to installing any motherboard, I'd recommend laying the case down flat. There is one quick thing to check though, before you actually install the motherboard and get too excited. Look at where the standoffs are. This is a full size ATX board. So three standoffs at the top is fine. Three along the middle is good, but there's two extras down here that are going to get in the way that need relocating. I'll put all the circles on your screen now so you can see where they've got to move to. The current layout is right for micro ATX builds, while we'll need that different layout for our full-size ATX system. You'll get a tool included in the case to make this bit nice and easy. With the standoffs moved, the motherboard can drop into place. Looking good. Line it up. I would have gone for a whiteboard in this build if I could, but your options are so limited when you're on a budget that it's just not always feasible. So going for a blackboard like this with white accents, I think looks still pretty good. While I'm here, I think it also makes sense to pop the graphics card in. Now, this is the Sapphire Pulse 6700 XT. As mentioned earlier, I've had great experiences with the Pulse lineup of cards, both in terms of this exact 6700 XT model and also with the newer RX 7700, RX 7600. It's just a very solid design all in all and it's going to fit really easily into a chassis like this one. As far as performance goes, this thing really is top notch, not only at 1080p, but also 1440p with the extra VRAM. Don't get me wrong, it isn't going to be 1440p Ultra in all the latest titles, especially not on par with something like the new and far more pricey 77 and 7800 XT models. But this thing is still really damn good. I'm going to push back the clip on the PCI slot on the 
motherboard. Graphics card is going to slide in. Is that lined up? Yes. Oh, no, nearly. There we go. I'm a professional, I assure you. Once that's in, push it down, get it clicked into place. Is that clicked in? It is clicked in indeed. Couple of screws just on the left-hand side here. We'll secure the GPU and then basically the core components are all done. Lift the system up and it's just the power supply left to go. I've picked up the Corsair CX750M for this build. A nice semi-modular 750 watt power supply. What do you guys think of this build? Let me know in the comments down below. I think I'm going to leave you with an awesome glam montage of how amazing this thing looks when it's all powered up. What did you guys think of this slightly different format video? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for tuning in though. And as always, we'll see you in the next Geeko Art video. Yeah, you're my fancy case,